Penn is trying to move around the outside to give it a little bit more impetus at this early stage. And this plays straight into the hands of the athletes in the second race. It's the first four in these two heats, plus four fast losers. Now, what these women are effectively doing is looking at one another and saying, right, we're going to have to finish in the first four if we want to make the final. It may, well, it can still work its way out if somebody here grasps the nettle and kicks on. But they do appear to be reluctant, although one athlete has now sensed, right, it's time to stop messing around. Let's go straight to the front. Well, this young woman, 17 times the Estonian champion at both 800 and 1500 metres, and clearly wants to get uh, the tenor of this race improved considerably. She's a 4 11 comp uh, competitor at her best, so she knows that it's no good hanging back because if she doesn't uh, get in the first four, then she's not got the speed at present to get a fastest loser. Well, she's certainly changed it, hasn't she? Well, there's one uh, athlete dropped out. Was that uh, Plesheba of the Ukraine? I think it was. And there was no apparent spiking or anything like that. She just simply stepped off the track. She'd only been going about 350 metres. Well, look at Hassan now, moving into second place. Very nicely into second place. Marta Penn of Portugal. She's a collegiate uh, champion this year. Mississippi State University, the slight figure on the outside, the white top and the green. And Urbank there is uh, Danuta Urbanic, third in the Ostrava Golden Spike 1500 metres, and that's quite a good uh, race to be in. Um, uh, big improver from 4.07.95 to 4.06 just recently. With a couple of laps to go, Hassan takes it over, controls the race. Right at the back, the Spanish Bobachia, uh, the Romanian Bobachia, is uh, looking quite comfortable. Well, you can see Hassan having gone to the front. She's really not putting up with this slow race. And some athletes who are capable of going sub four, they actually feel a little bit uncomfortable when they're running so slowly. So Hassan has simply said, right, I'm going to start running at a tempo which suits me. Yes, indeed. And in fact, it was Marta Perez of Spain. I was just checking on her up in that leading group. But this, uh, the third lap is always the one that sorts them out. And uh, I just wonder, Hikotska is in the mix as well. So as they come into the straight, they've got a straight way. And then the lap to go. And Hassan leads. Penn in second place, Urbanik in third, Iotska in fourth place, just ahead of uh, Gara Magian of Ireland. And this is it, 400 metres to go now. And Perez of Spain now moves wide, and the young woman who took it on, Sernoff, I said it, she didn't have the fast time, she needed to do that, she's right off the back and gone. Hassan now is winding it. It's a subtle wind-up down that back straight with 300 metres to go. First four go through by right, and Hassan has really taken this on. She really has, and in second place is Babasevich of Belarus. Numerous Belarusian titles to her credit, over 8 and 1,500 metres, so she's got some basic speed as they head with just under 200 metres to go, and there are four or five in the mix still as they come in with about 150 metres to go. Hassan leads, as one would expect. In second place, Paris uh, Hiotska coming off the bend. She's a talent as well. Hiotska is there. And here comes Penn round the outside, the American-based young woman. Hiotska is there. Barasevich is there. Hassan is under real pressure, isn't she, at the moment from Hiotska. Hassan wins. Hiotska second. In third place was Magian, the Irish woman. And I think that was Penn in fifth, but we'll check on that in a moment. But that, uh, actually, Hassan didn't look as uh, dominant as I thought she would. We haven't seen her outdoors this season, I must admit that uh, giving her the pedigree we did, that's on the basis of last season, at 4.13, as she looked a little bit under pressure at the end. I wasn't totally convinced by that, uh, but uh, we'll see. She's got it. Uh, Hiotska, and Penn, it was Penn, to get the fourth uh, qualification. Just running out of Babasevich. Um, not a lot in it between those two, but uh, here we go. That's uh, McGeehan, World Youth Silver medal back in 2009 for the Irish woman. World Youth Silver in 2010, over 1,500 metres. The previous one over eight. But there it is, Penn comes through. Those four clear at the end. But Hassan, well, world indoor champion, not seen her since. And uh, that indoor time, 4.0140. 
Yes, I think as an exercise in economy of effort from Sipan Hassan, well, it certainly wasn't that. She went off early from the back as if she was just positioning herself to pick off her rivals progressively through the race. But she made a bold move with about six or 700 metres to go, hit the front, and it meant she actually worked quite hard on a day when it's reasonably blustery, so she's tested herself a bit, and uh, it can't be great for confidence, I wouldn't have thought, but she's gone through very comfortably indeed. One athlete who has missed out is Danuta Urbanek, who looked very good for a while, and also, also you mentioned there uh, Stuart Varasavich, who's a multi-champion at her home country of uh, Belarus. Hassam then, Piotska, Magian, and Penn, the four qualifiers by right. Well, meanwhile, we're underway in the second heat of the women's 1,500 metres. Just to give you an idea of what faces these women, well, the fastest loser spots from that first heat, all between 4.14 and 4.18, which is pretty modest quality. So if these women do get a move on, which, in all honesty, they're not doing at the moment, there is a chance that we will get certainly more than the four. But it's a strong field. Great Britain being represented by the... Birmingham University medical student Sarah McDonald is a big improver this year. She's improved by around about 10 seconds. She's just on the outside towards the back of that group. Just running uh, rather close to uh, Lucia Klotcheva. Klotcheva, a woman who we've seen in many uh, international finals. So let's get some sort of idea what this is after 400 metres. It's rather better, I must say, than the first heat. Magnani, the Italian, leading things up, although just stepping to the second lane as if to beckon somebody through. There is uh, Magnani, just looking at it's uh, Pereira, the Spaniard. And now there's an invitation for uh, Makastad, the Norwegian, to also come through. So something like eight to nine metres covering the... Uh, Entire field, that is Makastad of Norway has the lead. Magnani is there in second place. The Britain just running towards the back on the outside. Also in this field, look out for the pole. Sophia Enui, a world championship semi-finalist in both the 800 and the 1500 last year. That's uh, at the back of the field. Just uh, looking at Sarah McDonald, a very sensible piece of running. She's not in trouble on the inside. She's just moving up nicely. Good control. The news of uh, Melissa Courtney, Courtney of Great Britain in the first heat, 4.18.74. Obviously, with uh, four fastest losers, then, well, uh, she's got to hope that this is a great deal slower. But we'll see. So, ten women looking for a guaranteed four places. There may even be as many as eight. Through 800 metres in 2.18. It is Marcus Dard, the Norwegian, there on the right. McDonald has taken much closer order there for Great Britain in the middle. Just coming wide is Marin Koch, who finished 15th in the 5,000 metres at these championships two years ago. And now the Norwegian, well, she's started to kick a little bit with a little more than 500 metres to go. Marcus Dard leads. Magnani there in second place. Pereira is in third. The Britain, McDonald, is in fourth. Klotcheva towards the back. You can see the uh, bleach blonde hair. She's an outstanding 800 metre runner, or at least has been in the past. Enui, look out for her. World Championship silver medalist at both the, or should I say semi finalist at both the 8 and 1500 metres, taking much closer order now. Good position by the Briton as uh, she goes into fourth place at the moment. Just holding on, made a little bit of a surge, has just got to hang on him now, it's accelerating now into the back straight. Terzic is really beginning to push it on, it's a subtle increase, you can see the look on faces as they approach, and the Briton is being overtaken and she's right on the inside, doesn't want to get trapped. Yes, you can see Klotcheva, with that almost flame of blonde hair, moving wide, making quite a move, the former Olympic semi-finalist, and Terzic... Kicking on there, it's been a good run here by the Serb. The European under-23 champion, and she's leading them home with Klotcheva there in second place. Let's see the Britain, she's coming wide into the straight. Remember, it's four places guaranteed in this final. And McDonald's coming through very hard. She's in third place now. Terrific run from the Britain, but it is Terzic who takes it. Klotcheva second, coming through very fast down the wire outside with Sofia Anui. 
but it was McDonald coming through in fourth for Great Britain. So Britain will have a finalist in the 1500 meters. The winning time, 4:09.71. So I would suggest there could well be six, seven, maybe even eight from that I heat think, in the final. Yeah, I think you're right. Eight will go through from that second heat. We're right down into eighth and ninth place, still at 4.12 and, and beyond. So we know that uh, 4.14 was the fourth place, a uh, fifth place in the previous heat. So they're all going from that second heat. Yes, those times just been confirmed now. The likes of Murren Cock also coming through. A bit of a trip there, wasn't there? And... Uh, Sarah McDonald involved in that a little bit. Uh, she stuttered a little bit as they were round about the 200 metres to go, but has recovered well down the straight. Liked her attitude. She got in the right place at the right time, faltered a little bit and then came back and looked good. Just overtaken for third place in the final stage. But nevertheless, the qualification is all you can do. I was impressed with this woman, Terzic. Look at that. A double gold medalist at last year's European Under-23 Championships. And she was coasting here. Not really extending herself at all, just to spread eagle this field, and she could be a real threat to Sipin Hassan when we get to the final. I know you've been injured. How was the race for you? Uh, the race, I just make it the race. It wasn't uh, that tough, but it was uh, okay. It was uh, good because uh, I'm the one who make it the race. And in terms of, of how you feel and your confidence for the final? Yeah, I'm confident, uh, but uh, not the same as uh, I used to be because I get injured almost for three months after uh, World Indoor Championship. But now I'm getting every train better, better. I'm almost uh, injury free, but uh, I don't have uh, much speed in my body that I have to work on that. So obviously the Europeans is a little early for you. But maybe for the Olympics, you'll be back to 100%? Yeah, I think uh, I will 100% I will be back to, to the Olympics because I have a lot of uh, endurance because of the, I work uh, almost three months, a uh, longer uh, time and something like that. But a little bit early European Championship. And I also need a lot of competition to get uh, in the top.